This is the Power Break Podcast number 080, titled The Discipline of Dressing Up. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Big Bad Bob, what's up, buddy? Well, I was just thinking about that big old steak you're cooking. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bring some by for you. How's that? <laughs> Just for you and Dad. <laughs> Actually, uh, we were wanted to have you over for some salmon, but you know, now that you're turning vegan on, hey, me, I, I didn't know. say I was definitely turning turn vegan, okay, even though well, I probably am eventually. But, yeah. Eventually, okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about thanking people for putting up the reviews and the ratings for our podcast. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, once again, I'm just blown away that anybody would want to actually sit there and listen to you and I. Oh, speak at each other yeah, but not yeah. so much you because you're you're a professional but i myself huh you're yeah. a professional yeah i'm a wannabe podcast guy that's all yeah. but and you're an officer of the law so people should of stop the, and, of the law, of the law. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get the deep pharisee voice yeah, what you the, say the law. Of the law hey let's talk about your uniform ah uh, good you, yeah how do you feel about yourself when you're in uniform you know um it, 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 it's funny. There's a difference between my generation of police officers and the younger guys. The younger guys are really kind of more about comfort and, you know, kind of high speed, low drag. I'm more into you have to look the part, right? Mm-hmm. That's my generation. Um, and we have all kinds of great reasons up to and including an FBI study that said that officers that looked good in their uniform, kept them, kept themselves in physical shape and looked like they were sharp and professional were less likely to get attacked. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's been consistent throughout time. Wow. Um, so, yeah, for me, I'm a huge fan of a lot of agencies have gone to, um, I call them the press-on badge, but they're like a stitched badge on a polo shirt. At Largo, we have the old polyester uniforms, even though they're, they're, they are a lot nicer. Like, they keep you cool, and they're not bad. But we're full uniform, metal badge, metal name tag, and it looks sharp. Yeah. And in my opinion, that's vital to the part. And I know that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. Yeah. The uniform is a huge part. It really is. Of establishing your authority on a scene. Mm -hmm. That's my own personal opinion. Well, plus, as you backed it up with FBI study. Yeah, those guys are, are well, I don't want to say they're super smart because then their head will get bigger than it already is. But, yeah, they know what they're doing when it comes to that. <laughs> Anybody in the FBI knows I mean that out of love. Uh, you know, the, as you mentioned, the, the uniform for the police officer is rapidly changing, and that for a, a pastor is, too. Yeah, yeah. And, talk uh, a lot. Yeah, we really need to talk a lot about that because it has. It depends yeah, it on really the church has. you go to now. Yeah, as a matter of fact, some of my friends in the Presbyterian Church in America, you know, it's not mandatory, but some of my friends wear collars, and they've said, you know, originally that was not um, a Roman Catholic uh, Point, it was actually um, Protestant pastors wore collars to distinguish themselves really? as ministers of the gospel. Yeah, I did not and know that. One friend of mine says it's interesting how when he wears a collar that he can walk into Starbucks or McDonald's or someplace and people will come up to him and ask him about spiritual advice and he has great opportunities to be a witness for Christ. That's simply, awesome. Simply because he's wearing a collar. Another one of my friends who wears a collar said, <laughs> now this is really funny, that when he goes to visit people in the hospital, he's paid more respect for having on a collar than even before he started wearing a collar, he would always be dressed in a nice suit and tie and he said he can be visiting someone and praying with someone in the wow. room, and people will show him respect and not barge in. Whereas when you're wearing a suit and tie, people just barge in; they don't care. So, wow. He also said there's also a benefit wearing a uh, a collar at a at a hospital. Usually, you get a free meal at the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's all about me, but hey, while I'm here, <laughs> while um, I'm here, yeah. Well, how about they? Well, it's the same thing for nuns, right? I believe so. In yeah. the, I mean, I, I remember growing up, and I grew up Catholic. 
you know, the, the priest obviously always looked like a priest because they all were always wore a collar and mm-hmm. they had a black suit on. Usually um, they looked very priestly, but the nuns the same way they had the habit and they had, they always covered their hair and man, they, it, but it looked apart. It sent a message of, I am here for, and in their case, I'm here for the gospel of Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, I'm, I've never worn a collar. I wear a nice suit when I preach because I want to, you know, look the part of showing respect for the uh, for the position I'm in as a, as a preacher of the gospel. Yeah. But you know, I try to dress it up. But you know, I know some guys. You know, like you said, they kind of dress down today. Matter of fact, there's a real trend in some mega churches where the pastor gets up and looks like in jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I um. Yeah, there's several churches that I've gone to where I walked in and, and it was jeans and a t-shirt, mm-hmm. you know, and, the, and a lot of the pastors have tattoos on their arms. So it's just, a, it's a very different look. It, it is. Yeah. Um, well, we want to talk a little bit about today about the standards for dressing for success, wearing the proper attire, which is applicable spiritually as well as Colossians chapter three, verses 12 through 14 say, uh, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, uh, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. But in order to dress for success, as we'll talk about, you need to put off before you can put on. And this, of course, is a grace called sanctification. And above, uh, it says, as it says in the Westminster Confession of Faith and other places, that is God's grace. Sanctification is merely God's grace in changing us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is huge. As we turn towards your article, um, which is also titled The Discipline of Dressing Up, I love how you equate it to both physical and spiritual. Because that sometimes is what we miss. We miss the putting off of the old clothing in our spirit, Mm -hmm. which is our old behaviors, our old thought processes, the old. um, We miss that part. um, And then we expect to put on what Christ wants us to put on to be more like him. And we can't do it because we still got all the garbage in there, right? All the stuff that's clogging it up. Um, so yeah, let's keep talking about, uh, your article folks. If you haven't been to bobrubaker.com and checked out, uh, all the great stuff there, I would encourage you to do that. If you want to subscribe to the blog, you can do that. Uh, and it shows up by the, by the MailChimp. That dude is consistent <laughs> as all get out. Uh, it will show up on Monday nice and early and you can start your week off with that. But yeah, let's keep talking about this cause it's so important for us to get this. Well, as I said in the article, as much as people seem to balk at dressing up today, it's proven fact that dressing up for the occasion does make a difference, as JT was saying, even for police work. Uh, Just take notice, though, how sports figures take on a different persona when they're in, in uniform. Look at how we respect or should respect police officers and military personnel when they're in uniform. And think of how important you saw the need to dress for the occasion when you went for an interview. Uh, you probably researched the interviewer and dressed appropriately, or maybe you should have. Should have. Uh, dressing <laughs> for the occasion and, and is an appropriate lay, way of life, no matter what area of life you'd like to succeed, including how we dress spiritually. Back in the 80s, there was this popular book called Dress for Success. Uh, the author was uh, John Malloy. Did you ever read that book? I didn't. No. Okay. But I heard all about it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's where the power suit comes from, right? Exactly. Yep. Actually, he, what he did is actually he didn't write to tell people how to dress. What he did was he was a researcher. And so he would watch people going in and out of buildings. And he noticed that if a person was in a dark suit and the person was in a light suit, the one who was in a light suit almost always gave way to the person in the dark suit. Wow, interesting. And he just noticed how people showed more respect for a person in a dark suit. Consequently, the dark-colored suits became known as power suits. It was interesting at one time before I was in ministry, uh, my wife and I lived in uh, downtown Cincinnati and this high-rise building where they had this lobby in the morning and people would gather. And you could tell the people from that building who had a, an important meeting because it, it was kind of a joke. They uh, all you have, have the a, power suit you on. Have a, you have your power suit on today. And the bright red tie. Was that still part of it? Uh, that was yeah. part of it, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, the, the dark suit. 
Well, as much as dress for success standards seem to abide uh, in the natural realm, and yeah, it does make a difference, the spiritual dressing for success standards are also applicable as we're given specifics about what we should put off and what we should put on in order to dress for spiritual success. Like Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and be renewed or put on in the spirit of your minds, put on the new self created in the after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Or in Colossians chapter 3, it says, You must put off these things, anger and wrath and malice and slander and obscene talk, and do not lie to one another, and put off the old self with its practices. And then it says, Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts and kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Obviously, as you review the list, as we mentioned there from Ephesians and Colossians, you'll notice that you cannot just put on without putting off. Yeah. Because if you put on compassion, kindness, humility, etc., without putting off the old self, your old manner of life, then you'll be a hypocrite, which yep. is what the hypocrite means, just putting on a mask. And that's where sometimes people try to put on, to make changes, is by putting on yeah. a new look. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and people see it. People absolutely see it. There's a person at my work where... What they physically do is really cool, but nobody believes it's genuine mm. because it seems like a mask to yeah. them. And people have come to just believe that she's a hypocrite. And, you know, it, it's, people can tell genuineness. But if all you're doing is putting the, putting the Christ mask on, right. they know that deep down inside, if your heart hasn't changed, it's going to come off as not really genuine. Nobody's going to believe it. And it's, you know, it, we don't like to hear that because I still want to hold on to a lot of my old stuff because it's super comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's the truth. If you don't get rid of it, if you don't burn that old house down, then, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that's what, you know, you look at the Bible and it says in Romans chapter eight, that the, the, God's purpose for us is to make us more and more like Jesus Christ. And so the work of sanctification, changing us to be more and more like Jesus Christ, is going to happen. And as it says in Philippians chapter 1, that the one who has begun a good work in us will do it to the completion in the day of Jesus Christ. And so right. God is working in us uh, to dress for success by helping us get rid of stuff, the old self, and helping us put on which is what is right and putting those things on, which is a mark of uh, Spirituality is mark of spiritual growth, whereas the the works of the flesh are a mark that we're really not changed at all. Right, and that's why we need to put those things off, and that takes God's grace to do that. But as I mentioned in the article, it is a uh, very important work that God is doing in us and through us to change us, so that we put off those things that are not good and put on the right things. So well, check out the article. It's called. Um, what is it called? Oh, the discipline of dressing for success. <laughs> no, the discipline of dressing. I had a, I had a slight um, lack in my memory there. What, what is happened? that? What I had happened? a senior moment or something. Anyway, <laughs> check it out and because uh, it is important. Dressing for success and the discipline of dressing up. Check it out at BobRubaker.com and all the articles and uh, other things that are there. BobRubaker.com. All right. Hey, so is there anything new going on, Bob? Anything we need to know about? Well, I wanted to step in here to just talk about the book that I've written called Power in the Valley. I really enjoyed a study of uh, the valleys in the Old Testament uh, early in my ministry. It seemed to match the situations I was in for a long time as I studied the valley. Yeah, of Acor. for sure. Anyway, they're good. It's a good study, and so. I kept adding to these studies that I would do, and I would preach on them, and I would write little pamphlets. And finally, I had a man uh, say to me one day, why don't you put it in a book? And so I did. It's a study of uh, different valleys from the Old Testament, some of the application as to what was the scene in that valley and how God blessed in that valley. And, and so the valley is not a time to uh, avoid, but we all go through valleys of life, and so... What I'm writing about in that book is that there is power from God in that valley. Yeah. And here's some examples. There's examples from the Old Testament, even in the names. So it's called Power in the Valley. Check it out at the resource page. Uh, you click down on the resources and scroll down to the books. 
and you can scroll through the books there, and you'll find Power in the Valley. Check it out at BobRubaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church each week. As, uh, you can check it out and download the sermons as well. BobRubaker.com. All right. So here we go, my friend. Are you ready for what about this? <laughs> That's the time on the podcast where we talk about... Um, the spiritual, mental, and physical aspects, and we go through each one in detail. But it's also time for question and answers. So um, if you have a question for us, whether it be for me or whether it be for Bob, um, please drop me a line at jt at bobbrewbaker.com. That's jt at bobbrewbaker.com, and we'll get to answering whatever your question is on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Is your uniform really hot? In the summer, it's really miserably hot, yes. Okay. Like, miserably. But that's because of the vest, honestly. Oh, the... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You got to wear a, um, you know, a Kevlar vest or Bulletproof vest, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's hot, no matter how... Because you can't really make that to where it allows air through it, because it would probably allow a bullet to. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah. that just kind of is what it is. It, it's funny, because my friends up north... Like in Massachusetts, they're like, oh, I love the vest in the middle of the winter. It keeps you nice and warm. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate the vest because it keeps you nice and warm in the middle of the summer. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, you know, you just get used to it. Is it hard to get out of the car with the, the belt on and stuff like that? All the things on your No, belt? as long as you keep yourself uh, at a good weight, you should, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Um and the cars now, you know, we're wearing almost all SUVs now, so they're higher, so you don't really have to. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When you're getting in and out of the lower cars, that's that's a joke. That's with all that on because there's so much weight back on your hips mm-hmm. that when you go to go forward, you got to you got to rock yourself out even if you're in good shape. So Wow. Yeah. Things you don't so, think about that our officers go through. So See? There you go. And th- not only that, but as JT said, the officers in Largo, Florida, look the part yes because we still have a full uniform hopefully that does not change but that's really not on me that's true you don't want to look like an unmade ben when you get out of that car (laughs) because people are going to just take advantage of you and i've watched it over and over again that cop that gets out and they're out of shape and they don't really take care of themselves yeah Yeah. people just try to work them over Mm. especially the guys on the street because they don't respect you you know Hey, good so, point. Yep. Yep. So JT's lesson in dressing for success. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for street survival. Um, all right. So question number one. Uh, man, this is a good one. So let's talk a, a more about putting off and putting on as far as spiritual success, the, mm-hmm. our old self and our new self. Is it all on me or all on God or is it a combination of both um, as far as the process? The answer is yes. <laughs> God works in. I knew and we, you were going to say that. <laughs> God works it in, and we work it out. There's a text of scripture in Philippians chapter two that says, in verses twelve through fifteen. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So do all things without grumbling and disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So let's just break that down. Okay, he says, you've obeyed, which is takes effort, right? Yep. And he says, uh, here's what it is. God has worked in you, and he's done that at, uh, both to will. He's given you the will to do it. Yep. And to do this, he gives you the strength and power to do what he tells you to do. Right. And it's according to his good pleasure. Now, he says, you work it out and do all things without grumbling and disputing. That's, that's a command. And so that's basically, a command of I've attitude. given you the power. Exactly. Now use it. Yeah. So when yeah. we read things in God's word, he's the one who gives us the strength, the power, the grace, and the thing to do. He's given us the command. And so as we are in, uh, feel a, uh, compelled in our hearts. That's the will that he's placed there. Uh-huh. Even as it says in Psalm 110, he makes his people willing. He makes us willing because if he didn't, we wouldn't. Nope. nope. And so he gives us a will to do, and he gives us the strength and power to carry it out. Uh, by the way, then he also uh, lets us know when we're not doing it right. He lets us know by his spirit that when we're doing it 
uh, uh, we, when we are doing it right, when we aren't doing it right, he corrects us. Right. When we are doing it right, he lets us know by the peace that we have from the Holy Spirit. And not only that, but, but when we do it, he rewards us as if we did it ourselves. Which is, which yeah. is even cooler. That's even grace upon grace. Yeah. Uh, and this also can be seen in Second Peter chapter one, when he says, "Therefore, brothers, be more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these things, you'll never fall." What things he is talking about? Well, he says, first of all, in verse three of Second Peter chapter one, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, God has worked it in. You know, He gives us the commands then to add to our our faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, knowledge temperance, etc. Right. So He says there's something for you to do, but God works it in. So God works it. God said it, and so we follow His pattern, what He's given us to do. But we also rely upon His strength. So we can't take any any glory in things. We can't right. say, "Boy, I'm doing a great job here." Right. No, we're just doing what He told us to do. Well, that's that's where I know in my past. That's where you go wrong, right? You let it feed the ego, and you start to think you <laughs> yeah. are something that you're not. And, man, next thing you know, it, you, you're just setting yourself up to be that prideful person that's going to fall. That's right. right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So the answer is yes. It is, it's God's work. It's our, it's our faithfulness to follow after right. that. But even our faithfulness is a grace that he has given to us, and it's the working of his Holy Spirit, which is his grace upon grace to work in us, to yeah. change us. Awesome. Yeah. To put off so we can put on. Yep. Yep. Um, so question number two, uh, obviously related. How do we get by the desire to be casual? How do we get by that natural human instinct? You say casual. I say maybe a little lazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little self-centered. Um, even in our spiritual dress. Okay. Well, you think about what you were talking about, the... We call it laissez faire attitude, you yeah, know, of yeah. even in the police officers, let's go casual. Yeah. Okay. And as you were saying, that when you look good, you feel good. Yep. Okay. The same thing spiritually. Discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life because you stop and think about it. It says in Second Corinthians, the place where we, the two of us go a lot, Second Corinthians chapter 10, that we walk in, uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we're not waging war in the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive yeah. to the obedience of Christ. And that's why Paul says, I discipline my body to keep it under control. So that sometimes, okay, in the natural realm, we see that, a casual dress leads to a casual attitude, okay, which leads to not really living up to some standards. So it's a, it's a downward slide, right? It it's is. like you're going, like, what do they always say in business? If you're not going uphill, you're going downhill. Exactly. Right? If you're, you're, not, you're not stagnant. It, yeah. It, it, there's no such thing as staying in one spot mm -hmm. you have to either be moving forward or you're going to go backwards. You're going to slip. Um, yeah. And that reminds me of the same thing. You know, the, those disciplines, you know, for me, it's getting on my knees when I pray. That's a big thing for me. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, yeah, I don't really have to do that. So they'll stand and it's, you know, and that's how you work it into. It becomes way too casual and then it kind of becomes right. Like there's I, I, not the respect maybe when you're praying that there should be. And, that's yeah. a great. That's a great point. Yet, yeah. I think that you know, sometimes people that, as we get older, can't get down on their knees because they can't get back up. That's <laughs> different. If you physically can't do it, then then God will obviously understand that right. part. But but what you just said is exactly. Right. We start to make ways to be more casual about things, yeah. and when we take things more casual, many times we take it lighter, and it's, we lose the uh, the reverence, the awe. Right. Okay. And right. Uh, just by you know, the old saying, I mean, you and I grew up with those uh, commercials that when you look good, you feel good. And yeah. you, do, you yeah. do good, you know? Yeah. I mean, just stop and think about when you played college football. Uh, when you put your uniform oh, on, man. You everything came was out just there. perfect yeah. before a game. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Before yeah. you stepped on the field. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many players, man, nothing but 
gentlemen, yes, sir, no, sir. As soon as you put that helmet on, man, they were cursing like sailors and they were ready to go. <laughs> it was all about intimidating right, the, the person on the other side right. of the – right. That was part of the game. I mean, they talk about gamesmanship all the time. Mm-hmm. And the really good football players – to this day, have good gamesmanship. That means they get in the other person's head across the way because physically, usually, they're pretty close to each other. That's when the mental aspect starts to become really, really important. And yeah. and looking the part is a huge part of it. It's a, it really huge is. part. Do you remember? Um, I think his first name was Brian Singletary. He used to play for uh, the Chicago Bears. Yes, he yes. was a middle linebacker. Yeah, he had one eye that went in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. And he always would keep his eyes wide open so you could see a ton of whites like he was going crazy. And when you talk to him later, he's like, I did that all on purpose, that I looked crazy. Like, (laughs) I was about to rip somebody's head off, he said, and it scared everybody. He said, I took advantage of the fact that I had one eye that was a little bit, he had one eye that just wouldn't follow the other one. Right. um, Which was a physical, turned out to be a gift for his profession. Mm -hmm. But. Man, he looked like he was going to rip your head off, so everybody was scared of him. Made a huge difference in his career, he would tell you over and over again. Yeah. Um, All right, so question number three, turning to the physical aspect. Yeah. Number one, how's your whoop doing? What's it saying nowadays? I I was having several good days uh, of uh, the whoop telling me that my rest was good, that my sleep was good at night, and my recovery was excellent. Look at that. And for some reason... I don't know what it was. By the way, I, I, I learned, okay, several weeks ago, uh, my recovery was really down. My heart rate variability was off. Right. And it really showed a problem. But then a, I, a few days later, I was sick. Interesting. And so it was like giving me the pre-notice, by the way. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So your body was starting to fight. Mm-hmm. So you knew. Something was going on, but you didn't feel it yet. Yeah. That's really interesting. So there's, you know, speaking of that, I, this seems like a commercial for Whoop. Maybe we should send it to them and maybe the sponsors. <laughs> but, maybe uh, they will. But they're doing a lot of study on that. I mean, they have like 80,000 subscribers to the Whoop. and, and, and uh, Oh, and part of the deal is they get to study your data, right? Yeah. Oh, and, that's smart on And their so part. they are looking at that to see you know, they're studying more and more. They find out what you can do to affect your heart rate variability, but it also thinks that it, it shows anyway yeah the whoop you know the, so so far the whoop is doing fine and nice yeah whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best name ever um so all right so in on the physical aspect of life what's the best tip that you could give for losing weight eating chocolate didn't see that coming <laughs> no tell it, me why okay <laughs> uh a friend of mine who was a nutritionist uh, several years ago was at a um at a seminar that was, we, the, I was part of the uh, group that put on a seminar, actually a weekend uh, for triathletes. And uh, it was kind of a training camp, and we'd have people speak on different things. Nice. And I was, I was, uh, I was thankful I was able to speak on the spiritual aspect of competing. And the friend of mine who was a nutritionist spoke on, okay, how do you keep yourself fit? And one of the things he said was to eat chocolate, and that's caught everybody's attention. I bet. Okay. And here's what he said. You know, there's a tendency when you have a nice meal to complete it with a nice dessert, right? Right. He said, if you, instead of having the dessert, had a, a piece of dark chocolate. I was going to ask you if it was dark. Not milk, I would, I'm no, sure. No, dark chocolate. Yep. He said that kind of satisfies the craving, much less calories, and... You know, the, if you get dark chocolate, like 85% and above, then it's also really filled with antioxidants. So it's really good for you. Wow. Cool. So, yeah. you know, so when you stop and think about you like that piece of cake or pie mm-hmm. or ice cream. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. <laughs> break off a piece of chocolate. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, yeah. and... um just kind of something that I learned, and I'm just going to throw it out. Probably our, our listeners probably already know this, but when we went to St. Augustine a couple of years ago, Amy and I, we visited a chocolate factory there, and they went into detail about why certain dark chocolates, despite what percentage they are, taste the way they taste versus the way they should taste. Um, and all of it is about the aging. And really? 
Yeah. So most of the big companies, so places where you buy dark chocolate at like, you know, Walgreens or Publix or any, any kind of like big retail shop, they produce so much they don't have the time to age it correctly during the manufacturing process. I had chocolate that was aged correctly, dark chocolate, and then it was 80%, and it was the most delicious, mm. non-bitter chocolate I've ever had. Wow. Like I was like, man, that's phenomenal. And they're like, that's why you have to buy dark chocolate from the smaller producers of dark chocolate. It tastes totally different. It's not bitter. It's not um, any of the real negative kind of taste that you mm. get out of dark chocolate that people don't like. Um you can go all the way up to 80%. If it's aged correctly and, the, and processed correctly, it tastes delicious. So, so I would so encourage I buy people. Some dark chocolate and just leave it in the cupboard for. Not that kind of aging. It has to be oh, during the process. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be during the process. Good try, buddy. Good try. No, then it starts to separate. That's a totally different issue. There you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, check out the, uh, the things we were talking about here that we do say that as in all things, discipline does make the difference in all aspects of yep. life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. This is show number 080. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobrubigger.com and listen for Bob's answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Before we step out here, let me just step in and say, check out this book. It's called The Power of Gratitude. A little book that I wrote on the, how gratitude affects us in every aspect of life. And really, it, uh, it does make a difference. And there's so many, so many reasons that you can get up in the morning and start listing the things for which you're grateful. And that's a great thing to do. It is. Uh, yep. The book is called The Power of Gratitude. Click on the books uh, after you click on the resources. Click on the books at BobRubaker.com. Scroll down to The Power of Gratitude and order your copy today. The Power of Gratitude at BobRubaker.com. And I'm grateful for you, Bob. I just want to throw that in, buddy. Well, I am grateful All of our time you together. together. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. We, we have some good times here. and it's We good. do. Faux yeah. show. <laughs> All right, folks, I really appreciate you joining us for another Power Break podcast. Uh, please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, Bob's weekly blog, and other really cool stuff at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break podcast.